Can panel members please explain specific employment initiatives they plan to put into place to address both hidden and non-hidden unemployment within the city? I heard earlier mention about kind of line approach to employment initiatives, etc. But the fact remains that we have differential levels of uh, unemployment rates among the young, among the, amongst the uh, older people, 50 plus high levels of unemployment, uh, among women returners. Uh, it is not a homogeneous labour market. We have a complex labour market and it requires specific initiatives to address uh, what is uh, long-term uh, unemployment problems for many, many people within the city. I know the city mayor has initiated a number of initiatives what I would like to hear, what we would like to hear, is something specific. How much are you going to spend? What kind of companies are you going to work with? What are you going to do about youth unemployment? The young people who are not on the register because they are not claiming benefit, how are you going to address those kind of issues? If you can actually help to answer those questions, that would be Thank you. Okay, this is a, that's a long question and actually I want a short answer. Um, a short shorter than the previous um, answers we've been given. Can I ask Adrian to start that one off, please? And we're going this way along the table. Sure. Um, I'm an employment lawyer. I spend a lot of time working with different groups. Um, I've worked with the Prince's Trust, as I've said, uh, and I've worked with various colleges that are trying to. Um, get the apprenticeship thing on the go. What I would like to do in Leicester is something that's being done in Birmingham, and that is to offer uh, a further amount of money. And you're, you're probably aware that if, if someone takes on an apprentice, they get a £1,500 grant from central government. Um, what's been happening in Birmingham is they've been matching that grant for someone who takes on an apprentice. So if you take on an apprentice, you get extra money for, to, to help with your um, business and to help to be able to afford that apprentice. And that gives two things. It helps the business, it helps the business to grow, it gives the apprentice a chance to get to work uh, and to spend some time in college. So with youth unemployment, that would be one of the specific things that I would look towards doing. Okay, thanks. Paul? Um, the employment, where, where, where we have the high unemployment, we need to look at the industries that are in those areas and see what their employment profile is and encourage them to look at younger people, people with skills who are older and make sure that they're looking at the whole um, I feel like playing field of opportunity that exists in the skills of Leicester. That Leicester people get Leicester jobs. So that Leicester people are successful. Um, apprenticeships is one route but a route into a job is also how skilled you are presenting yourself. <coughs> so offering whatever age somebody is through different agencies, skills in CV writing, skills in presentation and interview, skills uh, in, in just being bossy and going on to that employer and saying, what have you got on your books? Where can I fit into your organization? Give people the confidence to go for the job. Thank you. Sir. Over the last four years, the economic action plan that uh, I committed myself to right at the very first weeks of the administration has brought tens of millions of pounds of investment into this city. We've created over 3,000 new jobs, 1,000 quality apprenticeships, but of course it's uh, important that we create new jobs across the whole range of the economy. It's important we're creating jobs for those young people who are not in employment, in education or training, the so-called needs. It's important also that we create jobs for the graduates from our universities. That's why IBM was so important getting them here. It's important that we continue the work of the last four years because uh, actually there is nothing worse for a city, its economy, the families, the people and the communities than unemployment. People who want jobs, who need jobs and can't get them. And I'm determined that we have a continued investment in this city, building on what we've got over the last four years, over the next four years, that brings those jobs and that needs that investment. We've got a record of very considerable achievement, but still, as I've said so many times this evening, 
a lot still to be done. It's just work in progress. Thanks. After? Um, well, I think the truth is most jobs are going to be created by the private sector uh, and there's not a lot the council can do about that. Yes, there is. Um, uh, uh, jobs are created by the private sector and the question is how do we get um, young people or old people into those jobs? Now I've said before we need ongoing training for older workers but we've already got funding and apprenticeships comes down to funding. We've already got some funding in the form of education for teenagers, for 14, 15, 16 year olds. If they're not interested in academic, academic uh, uh, education, focus that funding on vocational training we, we, are, we hear regularly in the Leicester Mercury, for example, employers saying they can't get skilled workers. Uh, there's jobs galore in Leicester, but they haven't got matching skills. So let's focus on trying to get uh, our apprenticeships, our education, our skills training on the skills that uh, are needed for the jobs that already exist. And that's the only way um, uh, you, you can get those people in jobs. Now, Peter might say the council created those jobs. No, you can, you can attract inward investment, yes, but that's still the private sector, that's still IBM that's created those jobs. And uh, I, I agree totally uh, that Ellen Dolany, who, who attracted these jobs in, should be encouraged to uh, pursue uh, 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 that course. Uh, but the existing jobs that are created, that are exist in the city, we need to make sure we are training uh, our youngsters and also older people who uh, find themselves unemployed in middle age. Uh, we need to ensure that they all get those skills so they can apply for those jobs and get those jobs. Thanks. Two. Now, I'd like to put steps in place to make it easier and simpler for people to, uh, to start their own business, um, either with um, uh, kind of being um, more gentle on council tax rates for people who are starting up their new business or local business rates um, for people who are just literally starting out. I think that's important um, because, um, well, Clearly, everybody wants to do it, but it's a risk to suddenly like to stop having a, a steady income stream and to, and to go out there and do it for yourself. So I think it's important to be able to actually give those people a, a bit of a, a bit of a, an easier way in. Um, I, I want to be quick as well because I realise we don't have much time. Um, but I'd also like to enable professionals to uh, uh, to register their details onto a uh, onto a kind of talent pool database. Um, so really, what would happen is. Uh, if you have skills in certain areas, you could upload your work onto that. This is all would be run by the, the city council, um, and then let your work speak for itself. Uh, and also, then the, the council would then have a database of all different kinds of professionals from all different kinds of backgrounds. So that when they outsource, they don't outsource to multinational corporations. They don't outsource to companies from all over the country. They outsource to independent professionals that come from Leicester.